Let's have a look at a camcorder, which is a video camera with a built-in video recorder. This is a Canon, it uses 8mm tapes, but it's seen better days. Uh, it looks like somebody has had a go at removing a tape without the eject mechanism functioning. Maybe the mechanism was jammed, or maybe they couldn't find a battery, <laughs> I don't know. No idea why it's like that. Someone just gave it to me as is. So there's a few bits that have fallen out there. They take up reel and this tape guide for the loading and some other brackets. But it has got the door and the top piece. But it's been bent. Quite severely there. I think that's the arm that moves in and out. So it uses 8mm tapes, which are these. It came with two brand new unopened tapes, which is interesting. Wouldn't find those often these days. Should we open them to see what's inside? Maybe not yet. So we can power this up and see what it does. Got a screen. And there's output connections there. And I've got a battery eliminator power supply thing. So the camera functions, it's even got a color viewfinder, which is interesting. It's got a little joystick thing here for controlling the menu. Um, but the whole time there's a motor going trying to do something with this mechanism, probably because it's not in the fully eject or fully loaded position so I want to see if it's possible to get this back together it's probably not possible but I'd like to try let's at least take it apart and have a look at the stuff inside it looks like most of the screws are JIS0 being a Japanese thing it's going to be JIS. We need to get closer to see what's going on here. It's really important to have the right screwdriver for these things, especially when you're dealing with the metal parts is the screws are often very tight. I have not checked if there's service manuals or the like available for this. It's possible there's a procedure showing you how to open it up, but yeah, we'll just have a go first and see what happens. Look at that. Okay, there's a cable to the viewfinder. All the backs come off as well. Just looking to see what what needs to be undone here. So that comes out. That's the viewfinder. Then there's a tiny little one on the bottom here. Or some controls. Then there's this wire. You can pull out from the other end. 
So that half's now come off. Another snapped off little piece. Oh, I think what that is, is the top of the switch that detects what type of tape you've loaded. Yes, from there. I think there would have been a little switch assembly on there that pokes into holes in the tape. These are for right protect. Now this front piece. Does that there go all the way down to the bottom? Some kind of foam stuff. I think it does. Yeah. If we can slide that out. Uh, it's got double-sided tape. It's off. And these cables are glued onto this. A ground connection. And another ribbon cable. So that must be because the microphones are there, they would ground the middlework. And a little cable for those. Okay, we ripped that off. Yeah, yeah so there's microphones, that's stereo, microphones there. There must be a little preamp board there because there's earphones and microphone external connections. Now there's one more piece of casing here. No, nope, just goes all the way up. Well, I think it'll be easier if the mechanism wasn't all bent out of shape. Uh, there's the zoom control here, so that needs disconnecting. So now that's all out of the way. Broken off piece of stuff. Ah, oh, I see. That came off of off of here. It's a peg that holds the other end of the strap on, the hand strap. And the camera's focusing on that because it's more exciting. Get rid of this foam thing. And then it gives us access to undo this cable to get that out of the way. This sticky off without wrecking the cables. There's a little joystick thing. That's quite interesting. Looks like it's got a, a key on the shaft, like it's an encoder as well. Not sure about that, but yeah, it pushes in different directions. A neat little control. Kind of switch there. Well, I think that might be the standby. There's the record button there. It's a nice feeling. And then there's this lever. Yeah, well, I think pushes on that, which puts it into a standby mode. Now if we want to deal to this mechanism, we have to get it out completely, completely separated from the rest of the stuff. That connects by one cat. Uh, the, the retaining clip snapped off. 
Anyway, let's get the camera pod out of the way. Looks like it's only held in by one screw and another screw up here to the top. Oh, it's got some extra cables. So that that was there, and there's a cable going onto the side there. And there's this wire going over to the back. Which goes from the separate board, which has got an infrared receiver on it. The tally light. Some connectors on the end there. Which is where the motors in bits and pieces go. Oh, I think we can undo them from the this end because those are all connectors along there. All edge connector thingies. There's one more there which looks like it's the that will be the video signal there on the shielded cable, and this one below will be the drum motor. Oh, there's one more there. So that goes to the controls. So the row of buttons up the top there. So here's the board. Lots of chips on there. Now we're getting closer to the mechanism. So there's a few extra bits to take off, brackets, okay now there's a plastic bracket here That's the thing that holds the controls. Now we're down to just the mechanism. Pretty clean on the bottom. And now this disaster. Let's see if it's possible for this part of the mechanism to come off. Oh yes, there's an eject lever there. Let's check. So there's got the loading motor here, which has a worm drive off of it, which will stop the mechanism from turning unless it's being turned by the motor. So we can either apply power to the motor to move it, or we can pull off this loading motor assembly, and then we'll be able to freely turn the uh, loading mechanism. But we just need to make sure that we're not going to upset anything that has critical timing. Down there is the... Uh, mode switch and it's got a little arrow on the gear which points to an arrow on the housing so it looks like it's in the well, maybe it's in the playing position not sure or a unload position hard to know because that um loading arm thing is in its half loaded form it would end up up here when it's fully loaded and it'll be back here when it's fully unloaded and so let's just see. But if we take this off, it should not affect any of the timing. There are some clips. And then there's 
the pig. That's the loading motor. I think that's also the, the dew sensor there, checking if moisture is forming inside it. Do not want moisture in here because it will cause the tape to stick to the head or head drum. So now we should be able to turn the mechanism ourselves. Seems to be jammed. Not surprising. That part there I think is normally moved by this little arm here which rides in this this plastic slot. Yeah, it's jammed up now. Okay, I think we can take the mechanism off by undoing some screws. There, here, there, and there are screws that hold this movable part. But I need to work out what else is going to get wrecked if that gets removed. What else is it going to get upset by that? What holds this in? Aha! The eject mechanism. Oh, I see. This plastic part here is a clip that clips into this slot to the... Oh, there's something rattling around. Oh, it's another one of those little thingies. We've got two of those now. I don't know what they do. Ah, they're probably the... They're probably the contacts from the switch. Let's see, that's what those are. So, I think if we unclip that we can get that to come out. There you go. So that piece will need to be severely straightened out. Now in this piece, I notice this top part here should be able to remove it. It looks like it's got press, pressing contacts for the little infrared light there for the tape end sensing. So I think we can take that off. That's all bent. Feed reel is snapped off. The, the supply reel, or the yeah, supply reel there, take up is supposed to be in that hole. So this little shaft thing has been ripped out of that hole there. It looks like it doesn't retain on there. Or maybe there's a plastic thing. Holding it on. Probably part of that braking mechanism there. Ah, here are some more parts of what I think is the switch. Another one of those little pieces there, which I think would have been poking up out of here as a little switch for detecting the type of tape. Now there's the back tension band around there which has been pulled tight and I'm wondering if there's a way of getting that off oh now that's fallen off that's part of a a brake mechanism I think I might have to okay so that stuff gets retained by that thing that we removed let's just take those off Try to remember that looks broken there. Well, I think that, and that's bent. So because this piece has been so brutally bent over, because that would have been flat this way, it's upset this stuff here. Let's see if we can get the sliding piece off. Is that possible? Uh, what 
other things will fall apart when that comes off. Uh, I think we have to get that off first, the little idler, which has... We have to get this off, which has some kind of a circlipy split washer thing. Ultra tiny down the hole there that I can barely even see. At least the easy part is this connection which is on the moving pit and can be removed from this housing. So it, oh, yeah, the rigid part of the flex is gone all crusty and cracked off. Okay, well that's free now so we're not going to rip it too badly if we try and rip, try and remove this part. Okay, so the movement of that is just this track here. The movement of that is something... There's a slot, there's a rod that goes down a slot there. I'm not sure. I think it's just another track that it rides in. This is another track there that this business rides in. But it's a little bit bent. I think we're ready to just rem oh, no, we're not ready. We've got to take that off. Which it doesn't happen from there. Yeah, it's a little tiny split washer. Um, so I'm going to try and do something to get rid of that, or to, to remove that carefully. I need some kind of poking thing. Maybe the tiny little screwdrivers will deal with that. I've got two sets of this. Oh, look at that, it's got a 0.7. That might be small enough to reach in there. This is quite good stuff, uh, not like the dollar store rubbish. These are proper from Japan screwdrivers that feel really nice. So we'll give that a bit of a poking and see if we can get it out. The split washer is released. I didn't record that since I had my face right in there. So now this part should just lift off. So that's got a little bushing under it there. We'll put that aside. Now I think we're ready to uh, remove the sliding part of the mechanism by undoing four screws. It seems like it needs to be in the fully eject position to get best access to those screws. that thing moved because it's fallen out of its track now because everything rose up slightly when the screws were, were removed because it's all bent look at that it's freed okay well you can see how bent that whole part is oh and there's scratching there now hopefully yep so there's a little this arm here it needs to be aligned properly so the other the other one of these things the loading guide can go back in there where is that here yeah. this little thingy we'll work out which way around that goes that way i assume so that key's in there and then that will slide in and it's got this little thing stops it falling out. Presumably that's which way around that arm goes. Oh, because that there has to be out of the way first. Then that can retract fully. Oh, yep, so that makes sense. So that's now would leave space for the tape there to fit over it. Like that. Not try and wreck the tape too early. Probably gonna end up wrecking a tape trying to get this thing to go. Um, so we need to straighten that out. Back tension band, that little strip going around, 
It looks like it's got a screw head there, but I think it's just a peg which adjusts it. I don't know. Perhaps we can yeah, flip it off like that. Then we can just hook that out of the way. So we can deal with this thing. Yeah, unfortunately that one snapped off as well. Oh, but it clicks back into place. We might have to put a blob of glue on there. So there's a plastic injection molding thing which is well, flowed into cutouts in the metal. And then this rod is set in it, but it's snapped off that part. So that's the feed. And this is the take up. So the feed one's got the white rim around it. This post needs to go back in there and be glued. It's got a little protrusion. I don't know if I need to work out which way around it is. I think it's like that. I have to do something like some aerodite on there. I have to clean it, get all the grease off of it. I wonder if it will work with that switch broken. I wonder if I have another one of those switch somewhere. Now this PCB that's in here, I wonder if that is glued in. Would we need to remove that? I think it's probably attached with tape. There's an end, or an end sensor and the beginning of the tape sensor there, which work with the little infrared LED. A clear leader on the tape will allow the light to shine through and get picked up. So the things we need to do on this part is straighten that, straighten that, straighten the bottom out, which will be quite difficult. It might end up cracking some of the plastic parts there. This part, I don't think it has much damage other than this arm being bent. So that is probably quite easy to recover. Hopefully there's no damage to the head. It looks like there's bits of grease and dust on it, but we should be able to clean that off carefully. So the capstan motor is working, and there's a little, a really tiny belt going over to here where that idler gear was. And that's all good. Uh, there's another, the third of the broken switch. So I wonder if that's where the other little contact thing that I've got belonged. Yes, yeah, so I've now found three little contacts and three little post thingies so that goes with there being three sets of contacts in this switch body here hopefully we can just bodge those to make it think that things are all good yeah okay i'm going to clean this up a little bit and then we'll be back i have been straightening things out and i think this is sorted now so that's in the fully ejected position, and arrows line up on those gears. And if we turn it, we'll then go loading, fully loaded, and then through various play and other transport modes, which I think they will be switching between forward and reverse direction there. And then back to ejecting. Yeah, so we need to leave it in the fully ejected position because that's where it would need to be when we reassemble it when this part here is put back on. Now I started looking at this thing and the sides are more or less straight now. It's just thin aluminium, aluminum. It's quite delicate because it's got these slots in it. So those parts bend easily. Uh, so I need to work out how to get this bent up without wrecking the the backside too much. I was thinking it probably this back piece won't have to be perfect because it doesn't matter. What matters more is that this bottom piece is flat so that the mechanism can slide in properly. So I think by trying to straighten this, we'll end up hopefully straightening the bottom piece out. I'm not really sure what else we can do because you can't get it all 
disassembled because the plastic parts are fused into it. So I think we just have to try and hope that it doesn't become worse. Perhaps if I had some sort of vice that I could... I will try it in a vice. Okay, I've been squishing this thing about for a while with some pliers and a little bit of vice. I think it's getting there. Just notice this needs to come out of it. So the back is quite bent, but I think that doesn't matter too much. The the bottom edge is now fairly flat. Back edge is a bit munted still. This thing here is aligned. So I think it's in a good good shape at the moment. So now it's gonna be the matter of trying to get this all the little thingies pushed into their relevant pegs and holes. Yeah, that looks quite promising, doesn't it? Okay, so that lines up and seems to run. That's the eject thing there. I wonder if that will just come flying off if you're not careful. Okay, so that's fairly happy now. Uh, we need to check here that's bent so that won't work like that. Probably need to grease these things up a bit. That one looks okay. That one looks a bit bent. I think the tolerances for this will be fairly, fairly small, so if anything is slightly out, any critical thing is slightly out, it's not going to work at all. It will just get jammed, and that'll be the end of it. Okay, so we've got now this twisted thing to deal to. And there's a risk here that the cr crimped over ends of that shaft might have been damaged which will upset things a lot because I'm not sure how that could be recovered. Do we need to work out how this has been twisted and then de-twist it? So that there now the two screw holes that the that outside door screws onto it's possible it could work without this if you're really careful with the way you um in the way you insert the tape if you get it in the right place at the right time then it might not need this this part here It's been torn off. The aluminium's torn off there. That there is a little hook which pushes on the the latch to open the cover on the tape. Maybe it's not. Oh no, I think it's that thing there that opens the latch.
Well, it opens and shuts, but yeah, this should be springing up on its own. I think. I don't know where the spring is. Maybe it's that one we pulled off. I'm not sure if that's all the way down. It looks like it is because that bit slides over that peg and it can't go any further. So I think that is going all the way down. It's just a matter of getting it straight enough that we can do it easy. Maybe we can just work it in in position and we'll get it to work itself in. I think it didn't munt anything. This top part, oh it's got a bend in there which is upsetting the tape a bit. And it's going to be difficult to get out because there's nowhere to squeeze on the other side. Let's take it off again. And you yeah, see how that pulled itself out. So it means those little arms are bent. Or oh, what the fixture was bent. Still an issue that this piece here is bending down. Give it a severe poking without messing up anything else. Well, we need to put back this ejecting mechanism and try that out. There's some sort of adjusting thing there where you can change the amount of something. Oh, okay, that's the amount of tension on this, that back tension band. So the tape will wrap around there and if it gets too tight it will pull inwards like that and that will make that st strap there loosen its grip around the supply spool so it creates a balance between tape tension and the looseness of the supply spool to keep the tension constant on the around the video head so that thing there allows you to adjust that that tape tension by lengthening or shortening the distance that spring has to work over Okay, so we'll pull this out and we'll attach the eject mechanism back onto it. So that is this stuff here. So that's where the little hook that the eject thing will go into to hold it not ejecting most of the time. And where does it go onto this little post here? Okay, so that clicks into place and eject. Yeah, the issue with the, the reason why that's a bit loose there be because that shaft is not making a good connection between the, the two ends now. So they're not moving together. They're locked together. I need to bash it with a hammer, I think, to tighten that up. Now the issue is that should slide in and click into place. But it's sticky for some reason. Oh, it's because there's a ledge there. There's supposed to be something else going on here which limits the position of that. Yes, there is. Just 
something else there that we're supposed to latch in place. Oh, and that hole, that post is protruding and loose as well. Yeah, so that's better. So that doesn't pull out too far now because it's over that. Uh, I might try giving some things a bit of a tap to uh, line them up. Or well, a, a tap on these things, on that, to give that thing a bit of a tap to see if it can grab hold again. Hmm, that's a bit hopeful. I think this is about as straight as we can easily get it. It opens and closes and accepts the tape, so that's good enough for me at the moment. I've put a little bit of epoxy resin glue Heraldite onto those after cleaning them with isopropyl alcohol and hopefully they're lined up and well they seem to snap into place so they should be lined up or aligned straight and yeah, so that's going to get left overnight and we'll see what happens in 24 hours or so and carry on trying to put this thing back together for now We've got to wait for that epoxy to cure and hopefully stick those shafts in real nice. These shafts are now nicely set in place. I've put back this supply reel that's working fine. The take up reel can go back on and works fine. We need to sort out the damaged switch in the corner there. Looking at the tape the record preventing thing is on the end and then there's two holes that are blocked so my idea is to permanently short the switch that lines up with that and then selectively short the other two with this small switch because i think that's what it will use to uh, know when you've put a tape in and that it's ready to load and i can't couldn't find a switch mechanism that's compatible with that so instead we'll solder some wires onto it and have this switch outside of the machine so we can push that to signal that it tapes in we use some of this nice wire it's fairly thin and flexible we've got three colors here we'll cut off a length of that that can reach outside the mechanism Good stuff. We need to remove the existing switch just to make soldering easier. So the the top contact there is the common by the look of it, and those three along the bottom. So we need to connect to the end one permanently, and then the other two through the switch. Up. Yeah. Just tidy off some excess solder there. So that's now nice and clean. And we'll prepare these new wires. Twist and tin. And the other end will make slightly longer because we've got to solder it onto the switch. So we'll tin those. Uh, 
I thought I damaged a track there when I was trying to straighten everything out because I was poking in this area quite heavily to try and straighten this base part out and I metered it out and it's still fine but I'm going to solder over it regardless just to make sure that we don't have any issues with that track So now it should always be happy to write onto the tape, not write protect. And then we've got the switch on the other two contacts. Great. I think that's all the soldering we need to do. Little switch there we can use to tell it that the tape is in. Pretty sure that is the only sensing that it has about the tape. Although, I just saw that there, maybe that also does it. Might mean we have to push the switches at the same time so that it sees that clicking in by, which comes from that eject spring latch thing. Pretty sure that's what that will do. At the same time as we push this, uh, well I guess we'll find out once we get it all together. I have some grease that we might put a little bit of that on the mechanism while it's being put together um, just to help things along a bit we also need to clean up all of the parts that the tape will touch since it's been poked around by my dirty fingers See the whole thing is bent a bit. Maybe we need to straighten that out before we continue. Yeah, I think there's a it's bent uh, across here. Let's try and straighten that out. Without getting my fingers on this grease we just applied. Okay, that seems better. Oh, the screw has been misplaced. Found the screw that got lost. It was stuck there by a little bit of grease that was on it. So we can put that back now. Finals screw that holds the sliding mechanism in place and we can try to operate it seems to work pretty stiff I'm not sure how stiff it would be under normal operating conditions It's not too bad. What we need to do is get the loading motor back in and drive it to see if it will pull itself through. I think that's okay. And the bit where that metal lines up with these guides over here, that seems to fit okay. Which is good, because that wasn't okay to start with. We had to push that back into position. Now we've got braking mechanisms here which go into this somehow. It looks like it goes in that way. 
so that the post so they act as a spring yeah there we go so that turns in one direction until it's released which is probably at some stage of the mechanism that gets released I think that would be correct Oh, so we need to be careful because that part there was completely bent out of shape and that goes over the top of this when it's in the fully loaded position. I guess it's okay to put that back on now by squishing that split washer back down. That thing was quite difficult to get off. But yeah, the plastic. The plastic parts here are all cracked. That was very difficult to get that bent back up into the right position, or what I assume is the right position. And it seems okay, it still fits under there. It's whether or not that's being restricted from moving side to side, I think that's a problem at the moment. Because it's not swinging from side to side, which I think it would be normally like that. So something in this bit is not quite right. It's getting been way out of shape now. Guess I can't get the right angle down there. I wonder if it'll be okay just to snap off those bits of plastic that are messed up. I'm not really sure what benefit it has to keep it lined up. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it keeps that in alignment. Just way up out of the way now. So it goes to that side. But it doesn't want to go to that side. And it's not quite lined up properly. Now we have this part with the infrared light on it which locates on various things oh was that right yeah that's right that thing goes under there oh so that helps it stay in alignment because there's a little oh these screws got a little bit munted because I was pushing on the thread to help straighten everything out It still seems okay. That still engages each side. So that's good. Now there's another interesting thing. This was rattling around in the box where this camera came from. And I think that is a, a rail which goes between these that used to be crimped in and now isn't which would have formed part of what the the door attaches to perhaps went under there not sure oh no the door hooks hooks under that and that that one needs to be straightened out can benefit from having the door attached because it will help hold everything square yeah, so perhaps that went into there I wonder if it's worth trying to squeeze that back into these 
into these holes. I'm not sure if it's possible with the kind of snap in fit if it can. Looks like it can. Okay. Seems to work. Surprising, and it's kind of straight. Okay, what's the next part to assemble? Probably the eject mechanism. Oh, no, before we do that, we have to clean everything so that it's nice. Everything that the tape touches, like these guides, need to be very nicely clean and free of grease, oil. The base edge of the base part of the head is a bit gross. We'll wipe that while avoiding the actual pick up parts of the head drum. Okay, and then finally actual head cleaning. You get a piece of paper, alcohol on that, hold it against and rotate. Very clean. Maybe this machine wasn't used very much. Heads and camcorders are normally pretty dirty because it's hard to clean them. Oh, unless you're one of those people that has a cleaning tape which you run through it frequently. Now this little piece of backing stuff that fell off of this flex board went around that way. Since there's a little locating hole in it, maybe it will all snap back together in the right position. Looks like it has. That's lucky. That would be quite a frustrating thing otherwise. Now we can put the eject tape holding mechanism on. It's all running nice and smooth. Now let's get this in. Yep, it did release it. And then that will wind back to the normal open position. And then ready to click into place and then wind its way and then load in it feels a bit sticky still we might have to pull on the mechanism to help it go into place let's see if we can get this loading motor back in and then we'll try running that I've got a small power supply here, I've set it to 3 volts and we'll use that to test the motor it is important that you don't have the motor connected to its normal drive circuit because when you provide power externally to the motor you would probably blow up its driver if it was connected. So that runs. Just clean a little bit of dust off of that. And now we'll install this back into the mechanism. Some locating pegs and then there was just one screw holding it all in. Oh, there we go. Because that has to go under, under the corner of that. Here we go. So it's in there. 
there's various clips that have to go in at the top here and some pegs okay they're all in Oh, it fits on a weird little angle there. That's why it's a little bit confusing. And then there's one screw. Looks like there's another screw hole there, but that might be for uh, the bracket that went on the back. Yes, two screws. One, two. And that is that one. So that little notch there is for a screw coming from the other side. So we don't have to worry about that at the moment. So we've got the motor in, don't know which polarity is for load and unload, but we'll just give it a little blip and see what happens. All of that loading. This is ejecting. Now yeah, it's gone full eject, and that will pop up. And then needs to go back to normal. That will click into place. That sounds more like a video camera. Oh, yeah. Okay, the mechanism seems to work. So I think we should put the rest of it back together and power it up and see what happens. I don't think there are any other repair type activities that we can do until we've put it back together and powered it up and see what happens. Okay, for reassembly, we'll start by putting the various brackets back onto this thing. Because that shaft, which normally keeps each side in lockstep, is slips now. It's no longer properly pinned onto the brackets, so that side can move independently. I think that's what's going on there. Yeah, there's no other ways of restraining it. It's just all transferred through that rod that now slips. Okay, maybe we can do the end part now. This must be an S video connector, maybe, or is it an edit connector? Maybe that would be for a high 8 version of this. This is just normal 8. Now that went to the zoom control, so we don't need to worry about that. There's these wires. Probably should join the camera back on so that we can see what's going on. If anything, when we power it up. From this part, oh, there was a cable assembly that plugged in this thing. So that just picks up the battery terminals. And then there's this, which I think picks up those custom keys. I think that's all that one does. We don't really need those. Probably don't have to have the viewfinder plugged back in. But we still need this other part because we've got to mount the battery connection unless we bodge something in instead of that. Yeah, that thing was over there, which we don't need to worry about that for now. I think that means it's ready to turn on. Well, we've got to put then put back that one.
Go clip it down like that to get the monitor into the frame so we can see what's going on on there. We just need to work out where the buttons are. So those, the buttons are there, which match up to the little membrane thingy there. Maybe we can just put that side back together. That make it easier to understand what's going on. We've got to turn it on first. Got this thing. And the monitor. Okay, I think we're ready for the smoke test. Oh, there was a mode dial on the top. I wonder what that joined onto. Oh, that's this. Yeah, that has the power switch on it. And so it might be important to connect that up because that's what turns the camera on and off. But let's just try eject and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It did the... it did it. Okay, so it senses without this. That's interesting. Well, that's nice. That confirms the mechanism is roughly working. But we need to work out where that power switch connector thing with that plugs into. How does that attach into the rest of the camera? Yeah, it looks like it's underneath. Yeah, we're going to have to pull this all apart again. Go searching for it. So that goes on the front. So there's two connectors, an audio one. And what's probably that one? So what does that one go to? That will be the one that comes from the those two custom buttons, so we don't need to worry about those. Yes, that makes sense that there will be the mode control. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pull that off and have that located separately because I don't want these wires from touching other things. So we'll just have that mounted separately. It's set to... I don't even know what it's set to. No, that's off. So if we put it there, that will be on auto camera mode. Oh, there's another problem. It might be in standby mode. Yeah, that's what's wrong. You have to push this in, which is normally pushed by that lever there, to make it run. Otherwise, it's in standby, like that. Okay. So we can get it to be a camera, and that still works. Wondering if we should put it in. I need something on there. This is the most wrecked tape I have, so let's try it. We have to push this switch at the same time. No, oh, I didn't like that very much. Yeah, I think it's not down far enough. Yeah, that's disappointing. Doesn't want to load the tape. It's so close. So close, but something's upsetting it. It seems like when it goes to wrap the tape, something causes the head to stop spinning, like it's pushing against something. Oh, 
Well, it gets part of the way. You can see that it's getting... Yeah, it's screwing up the tape a bit there, though. Let me help it along a bit. And the menu doesn't seem to work anymore. Oh, I wonder if the character generation needs the viewfinder for that to function. That's possible. So it loads and loads when there's no tape installed. But once we put in a tape, it all falls apart. Yeah, I think there's a break. Maybe a real break issue. Because it seemed to struggle a lot to pull the tape out. Maybe this is why they had to rip the tape out, because it doesn't function properly. That's a possibility, isn't it? Maybe the mode switch is wrecked, so I can't tell what's going on. Oh, I know what's going on. I think I've worked out what the problem is here. There would have been a post coming off of that part down there that pushes into this hole to release the brake on the tapes and that's gone now so that's that's what that weird bit of stuff that I was poking around with that thing there that's why there's plastic molding going up there because it would have been a post sticking up to release the the brakes that all makes sense now okay let's do something about that so it makes sense now why the tape was appearing to be restrained and not wanting to pull out and if we look in this other this is another eight millimeter mechanism from a different camera there's the thing we're missing a little rampy thing to push into that hole to release the brakes on the tape so I think what we'll do is we'll modify this tape so it doesn't have brakes and then that will solve the problem for us. Seems like a good way around that issue. So we just lost the spring off the eject mechanism. Um, because I, I don't have the piece that used to go there and it probably would be very difficult to attach if I did have it. So let's just make it so the tape doesn't need a brake. Okay, well that's all heavy. Okay, so we're going to take this tape apart. I think this has lots of crunchy bits on it because I've used it over the years for testing machines. And now I'll just try and put that back together. Oh, so that would have been why the head was stalling when the tape got wrapped around it, because the tape was being pulled so tight, not able to freely move out of the, off the reels. Oh, it did something. Still unhappy about it. I wonder if the end sensor is not working. So it looks like it does a half load and then a full load. Seems like it's not, the take up's not moving. Maybe that's what it's bothered about. You can see that it moves back slightly, but it won't move forward. So I'm wondering if the idler gear in there. Is not swinging over to the the take up side. 
I want to try and turn the capstan to see if it will swing over this far enough. Looks like it will because it is in engaging there. So maybe that's not the problem. I'm wondering if we can see the infrared light coming off this emitter there to prove that the end sensors should be working. I'm going to point a camera at those. But then they might not be on all of the time. I'm not sure how focused it is. Oh yeah, it looks lit up now. Okay, so it does light up when it needs it. So you can see it's lit now. There's a slight purpley glow from it. And now, and now not. So it must be using that to determine that there's a tape in there or not. So it will run the check just when it loads. And it will have decided that there's no tape at the moment. I wonder if we can take advantage of that. So either the real sensor or the idler thingy is unhappy. Let's try connecting the viewfinder up to it and see if that will give us some information on the screen. Text on the screen now. Okay, it just says eject up there. That didn't give any other type of errors. So either the real sensor or the idler thingy is unhappy. Yeah, I think it must be idler. Well, yeah, the capstan's working, but the reels aren't. I think that's what's going on there, because it's been feeding tape out. To load a tape and then push fast forward or rewind straight away, it seems like it's being fed by the capstan and pinch roller, but the reels aren't taking up the slack. And then it stops very soon after that, because it probably detects that issue. So how can we make it think that there's a tape in there? I think we need to block both of the end sensors with a bit of tape. Have a go and then come back to you. I made some progress. I've put black tape over the end sensors and that allows it to go into play or other modes because it thinks there's a tape in there now and I've worked out that the idler is not swinging from side to side and then I've bent this little metal thing that we were pointing out before and also snapped off one side of the plastic things that we don't need anymore because they can't operate the brake and now the idler can swing from side to side properly And it's possible to get it to go into the correct mode, like that. And we can go reverse, and it goes in reverse, we can go and play, it goes into play mode, and you see some noise briefly. So I think that means we're ready to put the tape back in and give that a go. Yeah, so it's just a little bit of bent stuff down there that was stopping that idler gear from swinging from side to side properly. Look at that, it's moving. Ah, oh, I'm still not happy about it for some reason. Do you think it's pushed? Fast forward's not working. See, so it went into rewind briefly there.
Is it possible we need to snap off the other side? Is that still interfering? Get rid of that piece of stuff. There we go. Now the interference should be minimized. Okay, so the take up, the capstan turns in reverse for a few seconds and it needs to have the take up turn in reverse for it to believe that everything is okay. Then it's quite happy to continue after that. And put it preview forward and back. Just wondering if it's possible when the tape is pushing down, does it upset that? Looks like it. Yeah, I wonder if that that the post that went in this hole was also quite important for holding the tape in the correct position. can't believe in it. Maybe we need to break the glass out of the top of this cassette so that I can do it myself. did it that time. Oh, there's no take up. Oh. Oh, there you go, it's playing. It just needs the tape pushed down a bit further. I wonder if we can try and record something. Oh, now it's unhappy about it. Okay, so it seems the key is to push down on the tape. Is there a recording review button on this? Okay, so if it's paused. Oh look at that, it's it's got a recording. So if we put it back to Player mode. Then we will rewind it slightly. Oh no, it's gone back to unhappy about everything mode. Push it in nice and hard. Rewind slightly and then play. Look at that. It's playing back a recording. So we got it to work.
That's that's really good. We achieved something. <laughs> Maybe you don't have to hold it. No, oh, I have. So you have to hold it in all the time. So it's something to do with the position of the tape. Is uh, maybe it's these springs here, which should be holding the tape in position. Maybe they're not holding it in position. I wonder if I can just bend those down. So they've put a nice force on the tape. Although, yeah, it's because this is all rickety now. Probably not gonna do a good job with it. Let's see. Nah. No, yeah, so you gotta hold it in, otherwise it, it's not heavy. So it's play. There we go. So as long as you're holding, pressing down on the tape, it will work. There doesn't seem to be anything else on the tape. Oh no. Look at that. Copyright infringing material on the tape. And I wonder how and when that got there. Must have been a long time ago, because I haven't touched anything of 8mm for many years. It's also not the best quality, there's a thing across there. I don't know if there's any sound. Well, there's no speakers attached to this monitor, so yeah, there'll be no sound. So we let go. Stops. Maybe we'll leave it there. We'll see. But, there you go. Old camcorder, munted, sort of back together and working now. After quite a lot of work. One final thing to do with this camera, let's take a look inside the viewfinder, which is a color LCD viewfinder, which is interesting and a bit unusual. Let me take this cover back off. Cable is taped down. Uh, so we can get that off, which is the the clip that makes it click side to side or up and down. I don't think that's gonna help very much. Oh it turns, okay. So that bit moves when it turns. Alright. So not impossible to get off then. You find it. Yeah, 
the big um, clips. And there's a little knob somewhere there to adjust the to focus. Yeah, there's two screws here. So as we saw, when the viewfinder is not plugged into the camera, there's no on-screen display. So there must be some chip in here that generates the the on-screen display text character generator thing. And there's a little panel there with TCB. Must be some adjustments. And the T one has nothing in it, but the other two have got little trim pots. Oh, so that adjustment there moves the whole um, LCD assembly up and down. You sure that's what it is? That that will be the backlight driver circuit. Or a backlight thing in there, and then separate cable there, which will go down to the LCD panel. That's interesting. Oh, look at that! It's a little vacuum fluorescent type thing for the backlight. That's interesting. We need to try and turn that on. To look at it. It's all coming apart. So this is L C D driver board, it's got some chips on the other side. Here's the little LCD panel. The two chips there. I'm not sure what they are, but they will be related to driving the LCD and probably to do with the character generator stuff. Maybe it's electroluminescent. I don't know. If it were, this was a vacuum fluorescent, would it need to have more than two connections? Not really sure. Maybe it's just fluorescent. Interesting thing. Well, we should try and turn it on because it's interesting. I think it's interesting you got to turn it on. So we have to connect it back up to this. Now I'm wrecking the connectors. I think they went that way. Now then we need to bring back the other piece with the power on it. I wonder why the power has to go to two separate places. I think they weren't, weren't able to route the board to get the power tracks across. Is this set to on? Yeah, I think so. Oh, look at that, it's lit up. I don't know if it's high voltage, whether I should touch it or not. But, yeah, it's light up. Reasonably bright. Maybe there'll be text. Oh yeah, you can see the text through there. It's the white writing. Oh, it's all falling apart. I want to short it out accidentally, but yeah, there's the little viewfinder thing working. Little tiny, pretty high resolutions. I think we should run this one last time. Just for 
fun. Remember to push the tape down. Uh, what button was play? Maybe there? Yeah, look at that little image appeared. That's the viewfinder, and that's its backlight. And if you let go of that, it stops because of whatever fault there is in the alignment there, which we haven't got to the bottom of. Must be something to do with holding the tape in the right position. It doesn't really move. I'm not sure what's, what is changing when you push on the tape. Oh, I see. I can see what's changing. It's the take-up stops when you're not pushing on it. So you can see there, if I let go, the take-up reel stops moving. I wonder why that is. The tape's definitely down as far as it can go. Because I can push on this corner and get it going. Maybe we just need to make those springs stronger again. Bitten that right down. Oh no, I snapped it off. Well, it's going to be pushing down hard now though. Nope. Ah, just realized I still haven't pushed that button in. So those tape switches must not really do anything? Yeah, so pushing that... making the tape Pushing down spring stronger didn't change anything. Yeah, you don't have to push very hard on it. That means we can just bend the top of this thing in this assembly. It does look bent up a bit, but not sure where I can grab it to adjust that. Push it in. Yeah, also the problem is the metal is torn there, so if you put spring force on it, it just bends out of the way. This is very little meat left holding it together. Let's see if that made any difference. didn't help. The problem is you can't look in there to see if it's whereabouts it's slipping, whether it's like the whether it's the whole reel or something related to that. 
Yeah, we pushed it too far. Anyway, hope this video wasn't too long and boring. We did achieve the goal of getting this machine to work again. The take-up works fine there, with nothing pushing on it. I don't think there's anything wrong with the reel. I can't see how pushing harder would make it work. This is some sort of height alignment issue, and it's just not quite touching the spindles. But that doesn't really make sense, because there should be a fair bit of over-travel there. Maybe that bit there is supposed to be pushing down. Bend it down a bit. Let's see if that changed anything. Now it seems like the video is still going, even though I thought I was ending it. Nope. Anyway, that's that's the video camera. It works if you push on the tape. And also you gotta remove the brakes since the the lever that does that normally has disappeared now. Okay. Yeah, that was a bit tricky to get out because the that got bent down so So you have to be pushing it with your finger. No other thing that pushes down the tape will help. I don't know why. Very good. That's it for now.